Hello, I am back today with another pregnancy slash motherhood based video. Thank you for all the love on my last two videos. It's really nice to see you guys enjoying that content and kind of enjoying my honesty, I guess, as it were. I'm a classic oversharer, so I'll never hold back from saying it how it is. And so, yeah, it brings me on nicely to today's video, which is me sharing my kind of positive home birth story, really. I don't think, well, I think the majority of people still, certainly in the UK, opt for hospital births, which I totally respect and is totally normal and just another way of giving birth. It's a means to an end to get your beautiful baby into this world. But yeah, I opted for a home birth and uh, we were successful in having that. So I thought I'd share that story. Our little bub is seven weeks old today, which is crazy. I cannot believe I'm already seven weeks postpartum. It kind of does feel like he's been here forever, but also kind of feels like it's still a grenade that's been thrown into our life. So yeah, it is crazy times and I'm still learning a huge amount as we go. But yes, I'm gonna have to think back from this baby brain state I'm in to an even more baby brain state and yeah, I'm gonna just go through my story chronologically, hope it makes sense, hope I'm not missing loads of things out, and uh, yeah, see how we go. Share, share it as it was. So basically, I, this is my first baby, and my first pregnancy as well, and I had convinced myself, because everybody says, oh, first babies are late, like boys as well, we knew it was a boy, boys are always late, like he'll be overdue, and I was kind of, I'd psyched myself up basically that I was definitely going to go at least two weeks overdue and I was kind of going through in my head how I would be freezing my um, declining of inductions and various kind of medical interventions after my due date. I did a hypnobirthing course with Emma Batt from Little Hearts Hypnobirthing. She's based in Southampton. She is amazing. Happened to also be pregnant at the same time as me, which was even nicer. We got on really well. But she came uh, to our house and Jack and I did a kind of private hypnobirthing course. We chose to do that over any of the um, NCT courses and the kind of any NHS preparing for parenthood courses because I just wanted to feel empowered and knowledgeable and in control of my birth and my labour and I wanted to just feel like I was ready and knew techniques to kind of manage my labour and I knew what to expect as it were I guess. Hypnobirthing the name kind of makes me cringe because it makes it sound like it's some like airy fairy everybody is like hypnotised and it's all very strange kind of cultish thing. It's not at all. It is actually very like science and fact based. It basically sets you up to understand exactly what your body is going through as labour starts all the way through to delivery um, knowing what your options are with the NHS and the risks and the kind of benefits of doing various things, how to cope with the pain, not that in hypnobirthing they like that word, but how to cope with the intensity of um, labour, breathing techniques, things like that. I guess it's kind of like a science-based approach to labour and delivery, plus a little bit of like holistic yoga-based kind of breathing techniques and things like that. The idea being that, you know, there's nothing wrong with having an epidural or medical intervention, having a baby in hospital, things like that, but you as a mother need to feel like you have got this and you can do this and you know what your body's doing and you know that this is natural and you know that it is nothing to be terrified about and you can kind of go in there with options so that if when you have in your head this nice birth plan, whatever that may be, hospital, you know, elected caesarean, home birth, if you have that plan, whatever that may be, if things start to go in a different direction for one reason or another, you can understand your options, you can make decisions with kind of like informed um, backgrounds based on facts um, and you can kind of pr still proceed with an enjoyable positive labour. It doesn't have to be this whole adrenaline inducing fight flight horrible process that drags on forever and ever and is just a hugely traumatic experience. The idea is that if you kind of know what your body is doing, you know what your options are, you know how to meet the hurdles as you get to them that you can kind of remain calm, keep the oxytocin flowing and hopefully have a more straightforward um, positive labour and birth. So my birth plan was to have a home birth. Originally I had 
opted or thought I wanted to have um, give birth to our baby in a midwife-led unit. So that's not in a hospital, but a separate kind of midwife-only unit. It is less kind of obstetrician-led and more hands-off and natural in a midwife-led unit. You can still have a water birth and you can have on labour ward as well. But anyway, basically it's supposed to be just midwives, no doctors, no forceps and epidurals and things like that, just much more gas and air, pethidine, a little bit more relaxed, well, that's how I saw it anyway. So we have one in Southampton in the, new in the New Forest called the Ashurst Birthing Centre, that is where I had planned to have the baby because I felt like as a first time mum a home birth might be terrifying, dangerous um, and just very messy really. I was like, I don't want to deal with the mess, I just want to have a nice, I want to have a water birth anyway, but I don't care about having it at home, I just want to have it in the birthing centre, with all the midwives and everything there, all the mess can be there, and then come home with my pristine newborn baby and that be that. And if I need to transfer to hospital, I know that they can do that via ambulance or car, and Southampton General Hospital, the Princess Anne in fact is where the labour, the midwife hospital, the women's hospital, I don't even know what you call it, the one that people have babies in, um, is like 20 minutes drive away from Ashurst Birth Centre. So that was kind of my idea. And then I started doing the hypnobirthing class and I started to kind of understand, like I said, what the risks were and what the benefits are to each different option I had in terms of where I chose to deliver my baby. I kind of discovered that even for a first time mum, having your baby at home is an incredibly safe option, especially if your um, pregnancy is deemed low risk, like mine was, and there weren't any kind of complications mitigating having a home birth. That, yeah, I basically started to understand that actually it's probably the best place for me to have my baby because whilst a midwife led unit is more relaxed than a labour ward and it would have been a lovely place to deliver our baby, being in your own home, having your own creature comforts, not having to make the decision like when to call the labour line and when to like start getting everything ready and get in the car and then break that oxytocin cycle going over speed bumps and getting to the hospital and feeling panicky and getting there and then potentially having them do an examination and say oh you're only two centimetres go home and come back later and you know all of that and having everything that's yours at home if I wanted a snack it's all there I had a very well filled snack drawer ready in preparation for labour and if I wanted to move rooms or kind of stand in a different position or sway in a different place Place or walk around up and down stairs whatever it was I wanted to do it's my own environment my own home and it's just a nice atmosphere to keep the oxytocin flowing to keep those like you know birth inducing hormones flowing and not have that kind of on edge adrenaline based labour slowing down scenario that could be the case um, if I was gonna make the decision of when to go into hospital basically so and also our house is literally five minute, not even five minute drive to the Princess Anne Hospital. So it made sense really that if I did need a transfer, if something was going wrong or we needed some medical intervention, then actually I was closer at home than I would have been at the birthing centre. So it all seemed like it made sense once I thought about it to have or to try to have the baby here. The plan was to do it without any pain medication whatsoever because I am the most pig-headed stubborn person in the entire world and I decided through hypnobirthing that I could do it with nothing. I wanted to have um, a birthing pool water birth um, with one of those blow up birth pools and I wanted to have skin on skin for an hour um, after baby was born, optimal cord clamping to make sure he got the most of that lovely like special plus centre and cord blood all the way into him before they snipped it off um, and I wanted it to be as kind of hands off as possible. So on the 26th of May, Saturday, I think, I went to bed at a normal time, at like 10 o'clock, something like that. Yes, I go to bed early, I'm an old lady these days. And I woke up at about one o'clock in the morning with like, all I can describe as kind of period pains. It was just really uncomfortable and I just thought, oh, that's unusual, because I hadn't had any Braxton Hicks or any kind of ghost contractions at any point throughout my pregnancy. Um, so yeah, I had these kind of period pains and I sort of was able to just turn over and not think too much of it and go back to sleep. By 5am they were really, really intense period pains, sort of pains, not 
like contracting, oh my gosh, I'm going into labour, but like really intense period pains. Um, so I thought, I can't sleep through this, this is, this is really uncomfortable. So I went downstairs and I sat on my birthing ball and bounced around and did some hip circles and listened to my hypnobirthing affirmations um, playlist that I had, which is just statements for an empowering birth. Um, just about baby, baby will come and baby is ready. Um, like you know this is a natural thing my body is yeah the perfect size for my baby to come out of and labor's going to be gentle and easy and swift and all these nice little positive affirmations but yeah so i was listening to those jack was still asleep didn't want to wake him up there was no point and so yeah i just kind of downloaded a contraction timer and just just in case kind of started timing things and they were regular but they were just period pain sort of pains and then Jack got up about eight or something and I was still downstairs and I said to him what was happening and I was like, I'm definitely not in labor because at this point I was 39 weeks pregnant. Um, so yeah, 40 weeks being when the, the mythical due date is. Um, so I was like, I think it's just nothing. I think my body's just preparing for labor and um, let's just carry on doing what we're doing. And we were planning to go for lunch uh, with my parents that day, um, which we did. <laughs> it's like an hour's drive away. And Jack was like, are you sure? And I'd said to mum and dad, I'm having some twinges, but don't even worry. And they were like, oh, don't come. Like, are you sure you should be driving all this way? Like, don't, maybe don't, maybe stay at home just in case. And I was like, I am not going to just slosh out a baby right now. Like, I'm pretty sure it's gonna take a lot longer than this. Don't even worry, I'm probably not in labour. It's probably gonna be another, it's gonna be another three weeks. It's gonna be another three weeks. It's gonna be two weeks late. I'm prepared to be told I need to have all sorts of sweeps and inductions and it's not gonna be happening now. So we went for lunch, had lunch, contractions, well stopped pretty much throughout the day whilst I was having lunch um, we were making a big joke about it and I was convinced that it wasn't actually happening so then we went home carried on doing what we were doing at home I should say that at this point from 37 weeks I did have a kind of area set up downstairs so I had um, loads of like plush <laughs> thick blankets and kind of a, a duvet down on the floor, covered with a tarpaulin in the dining room, and then the birth pool um, was inflated and kind of ready for for action, I guess, and, you know, fairy lights and candles and things, and just, we have them in the house anyway, so that was kind of all set up and ready. Um, but obviously there's no water in the birth pool. But yeah, at like six o'clock in the evening, I was like, maybe get a couple of mild twinges, but nothing really. I was convinced by that point, nothing was happening. Went to bed at about 11 o'clock, woke up like, oh my God, I think something's happening. Like contractions, um, which started ramping up within minutes really quickly. And I was having um, three contractions in 10 minutes within half an hour of that. Um, so Jack was saying, I think we should call the labor line. It's three and 10 now. Like they told us to, they, they told us to call when it's three and 10. And I was like, no, I just don't want to get my hopes up. Like, I don't want to get excited that this is it. And I don't think it is. So let's just not call. And he was like, I think we should call Rachel. <laughs> you're, you're in labor. So I was like, okay, fine, cool, see what they say. So they called and said, oh, it's your first time, so, you know, call us when you're four in 10, because, you know, I don't think things will be happening too quickly. So at about one in the morning, things were then four in 10, and I was having, yeah, contractions all of the flipping time, four in 10 minutes, lasting for about a minute per contraction to a minute and a half. And I was like, <laughs> leant over the banister upstairs, like swaying around, like doing my breathing through it. I'd had like this nice plinky plunky spa music on and dim lights um, to try and like keep me calm and in the zone. And labor line called my midwife Heather, who wasn't on duty, was actually asleep in bed, but really, well, is am Heather's amazing. She um, insisted that she wanted to be on call for our birth. So despite the fact that she'd done a full day's work, I was just in bed and had clinic the next day. She got up, came over and was the first midwife here. So she got here, I think about half past 11. And then um, my best friend Gemma, um, who is a photographer, we wanted Gemma to be here to photograph the labour and the birth and because I felt like <laughs> you photograph every other kind of special moment in your life like your wedding day and things like that why should you not capture this moment as well in a non like gory gross way but like it's empowering isn't it like you want to well I wanted to have a memory of the kind of experience especially as our first baby and kind of something to look back on really that's just an amazing emotional kind of moment anyway so um 
Heather was here, our midwife. She didn't do any examinations or anything like that first because I just wanted, she knew, she knew what I wanted. She knew I wanted everything to be kind of hands off and just let things progress naturally. And um, so she was just talking to me, um, kind of timing my contractions. And I don't really know what she was doing. I was just in the zone. I was just trying to breathe through all of my contractions. Anyway, fast forward to, I can't even tell you when, 5 a.m. maybe at that point, the second midwife came. Maybe it was before that. I don't even know. So we're into sun day now are we no because sunday 1 a.m was already sunday sunday was the day we went for dinner with my, lunch with my parents we are now into the early hours of bank holiday monday the 28th of may yeah so anyway at some point um heather decided that i had moved from stage one latent labor which is what i was technically in when i was having lunch with mum and dad um to stage two labor where my body is kind of getting ready my uterus is like Expanding my cervix is like dilating and everything is getting ready for third stage, which is push that baby out So yeah, second stage labor um, another midwife was called she came over from the Ashurst birth center Actually two midwives came from the Ashurst birth center and a student midwife But basically it was a full house by that point Gemma then came over as well and was kind of starting to take some little pictures of me looking <laughs> increasingly more uncomfortable as the um, contractions intensified and yeah I basically carried on from 5 a.m until like 7 a.m swaying around leaning over the sofa kneeling in the hallway leaning on the kitchen side breathing through all of the contractions with either Jack rubbing my back or one of the midwives rubbing my back they gave me some nice um, essential oil massages and um yeah they were just getting more and more intense um and longer and longer so the gaps between contractions were just getting shorter and shorter to the point where like it just seemed like it was one continuous contraction and the midwives at that point did want to do an examination so they examined me um about 7 a.m um and i was about four centimeters so they said you can get in the pool now which as well as you know everything else going on jack had been filling in the background whilst i was in a world of my own just breathing through these contractions and bouncing on my birthing ball so yeah jack and the midwives filled the pool up at about 7 a.m made sure that it was the right temperature 37 degrees the body temperature um and then i was allowed to get in um and basically that was really nice because getting into the warm water was a really nice kind of pain relief it like it took away some of the discomfort of each contraction and just allowed me to relax a little bit it was really comfortable and yeah I just kind of stayed in the pool breathing through the contractions until they got really really intense and I was like I I don't think I can just breathe through these anymore and um, so I reluctantly accepted gas and air after a whole load of like fanning around being like no I can't I don't need it I'm, I can I can still do this without I was exhausted by this point because it was you know kind of the entire night I'd been contracting um, and now it was the morning and I had in my head envisaged once Heather got there at like 1am that I'd have my baby by 5am like don't know how don't know how that I even thought that was a thing and how naive I actually was but yeah I thought I'd have my baby in the early hours of the morning I did not yeah I was exhausted and I was finding it hard to cope at that point and not knowing when I was going to meet the baby and no one could tell me how much longer it was going to take and obviously and it was just yeah getting a bit much for me at that point and I kind of had a little bit of a wobble I was crying and saying I can't do this and just getting frustrated at myself that I was finding it harder than I thought I would um because I'm captain competitive and I just thought I could just I don't know I don't know I put these massive pressures on myself so I'd I was really annoyed that I was relenting and accepting gas and air, but actually the gas and air was amazing and I think it helped as well because I was just so exhausted and um, it was just a way of getting me through the contractions and they were getting more and more painful and <laughs> I was breathing through them and I just remember being in the pool and just, I was starting to talk rubbish basically and I remember saying like our neighbour next door is called Margaret and she's in her 80s and she's super lovely and I remember just constantly like getting really upset every time I was kind of making any noise with the contractions and saying like, oh, could someone just go next door and apologize to Margaret? This must be so annoying. And everyone was like, stop talking about Margaret. Like she's not gonna be able to hear it. Like just focus on your contractions and your breathing. And I was like, someone just take, take her. Like we need to buy her a tin of biscuits. Like we just need some biscuits or something to give them to Margaret because this is, I'm so embarrassed. Like I'm making so much noise. And they were like, you're not making any noise at all. Like you're really not like calm down. Don't even worry about it. And then they were, we were talking about various things and there, we used to have this big tree outside the house that we had to have cut down. And I was saying, yeah, and then I was like, and 
it was it was in the way of the chimney and I was like oh Margaret's chimney connects to London Road which is just another road in Southampton apparently her chimney connects to it and I was like oh my god that didn't make any sense what am I even talking about but yeah the gas and air basically made me super sound like I was drunk but I started to get really annoyed because like I in my head envisaged that gas and air would completely take the pain away like I thought oh you have gas and air and then while you're on it you can't feel any pain and it's great which isn't the case I don't know if any of you have ever had gas and air before for anything but it doesn't do that at all it just makes you feel like you are so drunk you just don't even care how much it hurts so it's like if you were super drunk and you fell down the stairs and you twisted your ankle and you're like oh my god it hurts so much oh my god never mind let's just keep on dancing <laughs> it's like that like you can still feel all the pain but you just feel so drunk you don't even care and to, until you stop breathing the gas and air in which case it's just full full pain and no drunks um but i think as well one of the reasons i didn't want to have gas and air was because i've got a phobia of vomit and i'd heard loads of stories about how gas and air makes you feel sick and so i'd convinced myself i didn't want that because i didn't want to feel sick with every single contraction instead of being able to like go <sighs> with the gas and air you just can't breathe in because you're having to go <sighs> pushed down and all of the air and everything is being like expelled out of your body it's just unreal it feels like you're vomiting like that but it's instead of coming up it's pushing down so every time I was having a contraction that like kind of tensing feeling started I would panic that I was feeling like I was going to be sick and it was that exact same feeling as like when you're really heaving, except it lasts for longer than you could possibly imagine to the point where when it stops, you have to like gasp for air. And yeah, I was basically having a panic attack, a panic attack in between every one of these pushing contractions because of the kind of feelings like I was going to vomit. So then I was like getting all like, I was t so tired by this point anyway, because it's two in the afternoon and I've been in second stage, you know, heavy contraction labor since you know, 1, 11 p.m., 1 a.m., and, um, yeah, I was, like, full body shaking and, like, really panicking and, like, hyperventilating and kind of past, like, kind of blacking out. I was going, oh, my God, I'm freaking out. Oh, my God. And they were, like, calm down, calm down. And I was, with every push afterwards, I was, like, Ugh. And I'd, like, go, like, the whole room would spin and I'd kind of black out a bit. And it was only, like, 15 seconds between these pushing contractions and then it would start again and I'd, yeah, be heaving. And... I was getting really, I was getting really frustrated because I didn't know how long it was going to take. On one one every minute and everything else I'd seen on the television, the pushing stage just seems like it takes like, what, 10, 15 minutes? Like you do some, you've, you've done all the work, you've done all the massive contracting, your body's ready now, you just push and it, you know, comes out or whatever. So <laughs> that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought as I started pushing, it was going to be a few of those and I would meet my baby. And I kind of was getting really freaked out with all these like panic attacks. And I said to the midwife, I was like, how long is this going to take? Like, I can't do this. Like, how long is this going to take the pushing stage? And she was like, oh, well, is this your first baby? Most people tend to take about two hours. And I was like, two freaking hours of this pushing, like this part, and she was like, yeah, about two hours. And at which point I just lost the plot. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't, I was like frying and hyperventilating and pushing and heaving. And yeah, I was like, I can't, I can't do this. I need, it needs, I need, it needs to come out. Like, I can't do this. It's too, like, it's too much. And the midwives and everybody else and Jack and Gemma were saying like, you can do this. Like you're, you're doing it like you are doing it your body's doing it you just have to continue like you're doing it just keep going and just the thought of having to push for two hours made me want to claw my eyes out because it was just so traumatic um so yeah i was pushing and then you can kind of feel the head like starting to crown uh, but then as every pushing contraction stops you kind of feel it go and just suck back up again it's like the most frustrating thing in the world because you're like i could feel you starting to come out like why are you going back up um but apparently that's normal so yeah they were monitoring everything with this mirror jack was there as well like watching because you kind of see the baby's head starting to come out but because river has so much hair um <laughs> it looked <laughs> it they just it was just like it was just black and also my um waters never broke so um i he was he was born fully in his amniotic sac complete in cord as they call it um but yeah because when i was pushing the sac was still there with the fluid in it and he had so much dark hair they just couldn't really tell what was going on i didn't know this i was you know freaking out 
pushing and they were apparently behind me being like, is it, is it, is that, is that the head? Looking at each other like, and uh, which apparently Jack found really funny and I was just totally oblivious to. But yeah, everyone was watching under the water with this little mirror of like his head starting to crown. Um, and yeah, an hour and a half of pushing later and River arrived, which was amazing. So yeah, he came out in his sack. We had wanted Jack to catch him rather than the midwife catch him and hand it to me because there's no reason for that. So yeah, as he kind of, the final push and his whole body came out, um, Jack caught him under the water and that's when his kind of amniotic sack broke and he was there and free and pushed him out under the water um, between my legs and up and through and handed him to me. And by that point I was just, I literally don't even remember it. I only remember it because I've got photographs that Gemma took, but I was in such a daze by that point. I was exhausted. It was quarter to four in the afternoon on Monday. I had no idea what day or time or anything. So just overwhelmed and at the end of a panic attack and just out of it really that I, I don't know, I feel like I didn't really enjoy that um, first moments with him. It was just all a blur and I was so traumatised from the pushing, you know, the rest of the labour, although it was really long, was kind of textbook as I wanted it to be. I had my aromatherapy diffuser going with clary sage and essential oils and the lights were dim and, you know, I had nice music in the background. <laughs> For the kind of second stage labour whilst I was in the pool um, and I was on my gas and air, Jack had put on my like... We had up playlists and down playlists based on your up breathing and hypnobirthing and your down breathing. Down breathing being kind of like calm, um, kind of Bombay Bicycle Club-y sort of folky, nice music and up music being like, I had like Beyonce and Justin Timberlake and like all of the cheesy pop classics and yeah, I was enjoying those in the pool with my gas and air and they were laughing at me because obviously I was like drunk and I was there and my like really nudie basically like dancing on my gas and air to like Justin Timberlake and bringing sexy back and yeah like that whole part of it I feel like was quite relaxed and was kind of how I wanted it to be. The midwives were very hands off. There was lots of different changes um, with the midwives as their shifts changed because of the length of, my, length of my labour. So we had various different midwives that came and went throughout the day and all of them were really lovely and amazing and different in their own way and helpful. Um, but I felt like as the time went on, my birth plan and my kind of like preferences got diluted. Um, and so I, the kind of monitoring to the point of pushing like ramped up quite a lot where I didn't really want any they were putting the doppler on my um stomach all the time just checking baby's heart rate and things like that and my pulse and various things and that was a little bit like more intervention than i wanted and i think next time jack's more versed in it now but next time because i was out of it jack would be able to say like she doesn't really want any monitoring like if we could just keep that to a total minimum then it might have made things flow a bit quicker and kept my oxytocin levels high i think they were interrupted a little bit by constantly having to move around between every pain for contraction and be monitored and then have a contraction then they have to stop and I have to have gas and air but um as well as all of the amazing midwives and midwifery students we had throughout one of the massive benefits of being at home was that I had my own tiny furry personal midwife Momo who for those of you that don't know is our Persian cat um and yeah he is amazing he's a rescue and um yeah, was very, very, very scared and nervous when we got him two years ago and has completely come out of his shell and is like a totally different cat now. Um, but ever since I've been pregnant, um, or ever since I was pregnant, he was like my little shadow, he's like my best friend. He's never been a lap cat, never wants to sit on your lap or be that near you. He'll sit kind of on the other end of the sofa and look at you and purr, but never was a uh, lap cat until I became pregnant in which case he was like all over my bump all the time every time I was laying or sitting on the sofa he wanted to be on me with his paws on on my bump purring away on my lap it was mad um and yeah throughout the entire labor he wanted to be by my side which was just crazy um but really lovely so we've got pictures like this one of um yeah him with like a little midwife with the entinox with the gas and air canisters and with the little doppler um machine listening to baby's heartbeat but yeah he was just there the whole time and if he wasn't on the puppy pads sort of next to the pool with me stroking him which was really lovely he was sat on his cat tree which is like behind the kind of dining room area um yeah, right next to the pool as well. It's just really lovely that he just wanted to be there with me. He was like cheering me on. Um, so yeah, 
he was like my little furry midwife and that was one of the benefits of being at home is that I could be super comfortable and have you know my cats there as well Luna came in and out and kind of was like what on earth is going on in here guys and then would disappear out back into the garden and off again um but yeah so if you're having a home birth and you do have animals then I definitely would you know I wouldn't say shut them in a different room or have them away with someone else because it was really nice having him there and relaxing to stroke him and um he definitely didn't feel traumatised by it, I don't think, he seemed to enjoy it. And yeah, weirdly, mama has been totally fine with the baby from day dot. It's really strange, like I was growing his little best friend. Momo has been glued to the baby in the most lovely way since. And Luna was scared at first, but is now totally indifferent to him. Up till the pushing part, really, although it you know, wasn't perfect, but when's it ever going to be? It was pretty much as I wanted, and I'm really thankful for that. But yeah, I, was th I think I was just so unaware of how long the pushing stage was going to be, how how painful it was going to be um, and what it was going to feel like that I was really traumatised by that. I did find it really traumatic and I did tear. So anyway, we had skin on skin. I tried to get him to do the breast crawl where they kind of naturally crawl up you and start latch on feeding. That didn't happen. I couldn't get him to latch and anyway at this point they wanted me to deliver the placenta. Mm. Um, I wanted a physiological third stage labour so I didn't want to have any kind of synthetic oxytocin injection to um, encourage the placenta to detach, I wanted to deliver it naturally, um, so they wanted me to kind of get that out really because if you don't get it out within an hour and a bit of after having baby then they kind of want to start encouraging things along and if you still can't get it out then that's you know when we're looking at transfer to hospital time. So they made me, um, Jack, Jack cut the cord after we'd made sure the cord blood was in baby and it was all like limp and white. Jack cut the cord and then had skin on skin with the baby whilst I then was led <laughs> towel between my legs with like multiple midwives holding it and lots of bleeding um, upstairs <laughs> to the bathroom. Our house looked like Dexter at this point. Like I hadn't anticipated that there would be any transfer of anything gross or blood from the dining room area where we had the pool up to anywhere else so lesson learned for that I'm gonna plastic coat the entire house next time but yeah they led us up me up to the bathroom and they said oh if you sit on the toilet usually that's a really good way of just encouraging it to just come on out so they put like a bowl in the toilet to catch it and I just sat down on the toilet and sure enough it just kind of had a little contraction it just went Whoop and slopped out so that was good didn't need anything for that um, and then they examined me because they wanted to check whether I'd torn um, and whether everything had kind of started to contract back and um, stop bleeding basically and uh, yeah I had torn quite badly which is really frustrating because <laughs> I was hoping I wouldn't um, and I did need stitches again something I wasn't prepared for and <laughs> not only do I have a phobia of needles I also have a phobia of vomit I do also have a phobia of needles so I was really not looking forward to being stitched up. So they brought the gas net up here, and I was stitched right here on the bed. Um, and they put baby on me to kind of keep that oxytocin blowing and keep, keep me calm, wasn't calm, um, and gave me gas and air whilst they stitched me up and I was having panic attacks again and my full body was shaking and my hands were kind of like blowing into claws and I was getting all hyperventilating. And I remember Jordan, the midwife, who was lovely, saying like, you need, you're gonna need to calm down because I, I can't see what I'm doing, I'm shaking so much much um but yeah I got stitched up and then at about 7 p.m was when the midwives um finally left after they'd handed everything over but um yeah by that point we still hadn't established breastfeeding which is what I wanted to do and so um they basically said to me like hand express um a little colostrum which is what your boobs have before your milk comes in um into this syringe and they left me a little syringe um and like syringe it into baby's mouth and just keep trying to breastfeed throughout the night and if in the morning you still haven't managed to then pop up to the hospital and we can kind of give you some more help at our kind of lactation consultant level and yeah just go through it with you there um which is what I had to do in the end um but I can share some breastfeeding stuff at a later date but yeah so I did need to go to the hospital the next day just for some breastfeeding support one of the things that ace midwives did um which i wasn't sure if they did after the kind of birth was they basically like cleared everything up aside from the birthing pool they got rid of all the blood in the bathroom and took away all the like bloodied incontinence pads and everything like that and all the kind of medical waste and paraphernalia the placenta all of that they took it all the bathroom looked like a scene from dexter when we got up there and by the time they'd left it was like pristine white again which was amazing um so that was incredible because there wasn't that to have to worry about however 
there was the small matter of cleaning out the birthing pool, which... <laughs> So we borrowed our birthing pool, um, I don't think I said that before, from um, the Fair and Gosport um, Positive Birth Movement. It's basically a group that supports and encourages home birth and offers help and support for people wishing to have a home birth or having had a home birth. And Elizabeth, um, who's one of the members of the group, I think she might be the founder, she lent me the birth pool for free. So all I had to do was buy the liner and then basically like all the kit came with it, the pumps and everything. And so as part of that, I thought, I was convinced that there were, because there were three pumps in the bag, um, there was like the air pump and a submersible pump that you just connected to the hose and like out the window and into the drain and then you could just pump away all the 1000 litres of revolting water. But uh, yeah, what I, I mean I was upstairs being stitched up so I had no idea what was going on but downstairs Jack was like, oh, I'll just go get the submersible pump and then realised that all three pumps were air pumps and so there was no submersible pump to get the water out and he had to <laughs> empty the birthing pool by one normal bucket going backwards and forwards from the pool out the back door and pouring it down the drain and I'm pretty sure it took him a couple of hours so that was a not very fun job for him bless him and yeah I definitely next time won't not make that mistake again and we'll be buying a submersible pump so that he doesn't have to do that because yeah that I can't imagine was a nice job but he definitely didn't get any sympathy from anyone whilst I was being stitched up having just spent the best part of 24 hours in labour um so yeah, whoops, if you're going to have a home birth, make sure you have a air pump and a submersible pump because that was not fun. It still feels all a blur and it was, it was, all I can say is it was just way more intense and way more painful than I had anticipated. Um, but the hypnobirthing was incredible, like getting me through, the, well, the majority of my labour without any kind of pain relief, without any kind of panicking. Um, I just felt calm and in control and was able to breathe through it all and kind of control the pain with my breathing because the whole idea with hypnobirthing is that giving birth is a natural thing so it's not it's not pain you're not in pain the word pain kind of insinuates that something is wrong like something's broken like you know you break your leg or you cut your arm or something like that that's pain because that's not supposed to happen you know you've carried this baby for nine months in your body that's completely natural the labor and birth is natural too um, so the idea is it's not pain, it's intense, but it's not pain. Um, I would have, it was so intense. I would call it pain at the end, but, um, yeah, the idea being that if you think about it in that different way and you approach it from a different angle, then you're not scared and you're not, um, you know, you're not expecting to need all this, all this medication and pain relief because you can kind of manage it through breathing through it and understanding and telling yourself and, keep reaffirming with yourself that what you're doing is natural and that it's it's all happening for a reason and everything's going to be okay basically. So yeah, it was really helpful and if anybody's watching this that is a first time um, parent um, and is looking for kind of a course to do or something to do to, to, to prepare them for birth then I would 100% recommend hypnobirthing like it was incredible and without it I am sure that I would have opted for an epidural. Um, you know which there's nothing wrong with but I do feel like hypnobirthing really set me up with the techniques I needed to kind of get me through to the point of labour where personally I did need some pain relief um, and yeah and I think next time when I'm crazy enough to have a baby or want to have a baby again um, we will definitely if we can opt for another home birth because I think that that was the best environment that it could have been um, we will be more informed as to how long things will take. Hopefully things won't take anywhere near as long because my body will have done it once before. Um, but I'll know what it feels like and I'll feel prepared. And I think that's main, that's, that's a big part of how, you know, the way I reacted is that I wasn't expecting it. Um, and also we'll be able to assert, or Jack will be able to speak for me more and ass really assert like what our wishes are and just help keep things moving along um, without kind of deviating from that. Having Jack there was incredible, he was amazing and super supportive and really calm and really patient and also having my best friend there as well was amazing. Not only was she capturing beautiful photographs of the whole thing but just having her there for support was really lovely and I think Jack appreciated having her there as well because they kind of were in it together and they were exhausted because they obviously weren't giving birth but they hadn't slept for the best part of 24 hours because they was they were there with the midwives supporting me so yeah it was really amazing to have 
my friend, the birthing partner, who, you know, it was only really in the last month or so of my pregnancy that I decided that I'd ask her if that's something she'd like to do or that's something that I wanted to have. Um, and she said yes, which was amazing. So I wasn't sure how I would feel about being like really nudy and looking at my worst with her taking photographs or just, I don't even know whether she'd feel uncomfortable with me being all like a big like dairy cow like heaved over the side of the pool and looking all revolting and I don't know there's like blood and stuff so I wasn't sure if she'd be squeamish but um she was amazing and really supportive and the pictures are amazing and I honestly cannot thank her enough for doing that because it's a really special moment to have captured and it was really emotional all of us going through it together and she obviously got cuddles with River really early on which was nice um so yeah if you're having you know well not even home birth a birth full stop you're so in the zone birthing anyway you don't even notice them it's not embarrassing you you nothing is embarrassing after you've had your badge out in front of tens of millions of midwives and everybody else and everybody's looking down there and examining you and doing all sorts of things like i, I want to say you have no dignity but you still have dignity but yeah you just don't have any inhibitions anymore i guess just <laughs> so yeah if there's a photographer there it's just like one more person to be in the room so yeah, go for it because the photos are incredible and it really captures a moment. Yeah, so hopefully we'll have a home birth again when I'm crazy enough to have, have another baby. Um, but at the moment, I, there is, I am not open for business for a very long time. Um, and I can't even think of anything I'd like to do less than be pregnant again and go through all of that again right now. Um, but it is weird though because your body does legitimately make you forget how horrific and how painful or how traumatic everything was. Like Jack says, like every time I've retold this story to friends or family or anything since, it's got more and more diluted and less and less like bad. And I feel like I know, like that's, you know, the last two hours was horrific, but I know how much pain I was in and how hard it was, but yet my body's going, but were you in pain? You say you're in pain, but do you remember it? Because I don't remember it. So do you, like, were you really? Like, I don't know, was it that bad? I don't remember it being that bad. And you're like, it was really bad. I remember at the time thinking it was really bad, but I don't know why, because everything's making, my body's making me forget everything. But yeah, it is crazy. The body is a crazy thing. But yeah, so that's, that's my home birth story. Um, and uh, hopefully it hasn't terrified anyone. Um, but hopefully, you know, everybody's different. Every pregnancy is different. What I would say is, you know, educate yourself, maybe do a hypnobirthing course, get the hypnobirthing book do an NCT course, go to, you know, the hospital and do an NHS course, do something to prepare yourself and make you aware, do as many things as you can to make yourself aware of what it's going to involve and what you would like for your birth and what your options are and if things don't go to plan A, what plan B and plan C would look like for you and just know that it is all worth it when your baby is in your arms um, and you've settled into parenthood <laughs> maybe two months after you've had it because it is hard work. Um, but yeah, that is it. I think, from me, from my birth story. Um, do you want to meet River? Maybe I should go get him. I feel like everybody already knows him because I've been sharing him on Instagram since we had him, but you guys maybe haven't met him, so I'm going to go and get him. BRB. Here he is, my tiny little ooh, angry burrito. Oh, I've woken him up. He was fast asleep. There he is. Are you going to say hi? Little squish. Are you a bit grumpy because I just... <laughs> Woke you up. Oh dear. That's a nice face. So yeah, this is the little man. That is all from me. I'm going to feed him because I think he's gonna be annoyed that I woke him up. Please do leave a comment or ask any questions that you have below and I'll try my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, then yeah, please do subscribe because it means a lot. Um, and I will speak to you all soon. So bye from me and River for now. Bye.